Hello! Imagine a giant airport built right in the middle of the sea. A true Japanese engineering marvel capable of withstanding typhoons, earthquakes, and millions of passengers. But this masterpiece of human ingenuity has one serious problem. It's slowly but steadily sinking beneath the water. Kansai International Airport, one of the most ambitious infrastructure projects in history, has turned into a race against time for engineers. Some call it a triumph. Others, one of the greatest engineering disasters ever. So how did this mega project end up literally going under? And can it still be saved? The answers to these questions coming up right now. Kansai International Airport in Japan, a landmark achievement in civil engineering, has just celebrated its 30th anniversary. Built on land reclaimed from the sea in Osaka Bay, it remains one of the most ambitious infrastructure projects of its kind. Yet, despite its groundbreaking innovations, the airport faces a serious problem. It's sinking. This massive airport is gradually descending into the sea at an average rate of more than 30 centimeters per year. The $30 billion hub was constructed on two artificial islands in Osaka Bay, which are now slowly drifting farther and farther away from the mainland city. Completed in 1994, Kansai became the world's first airport built entirely on an artificial island. It also boasts the world's longest terminal building and an almost flawless reputation for its baggage handling efficiency. The idea of building an airport at sea was born out of necessity. By the late 1960s, Osaka, Japan's second largest city, had long outgrown its landlocked airport. There was simply no room for expansion as the city was hemmed in by mountains. The only viable solution was bold and untested to construct an airport out at sea. Construction began in 1987 after 20 years of planning. It was a colossal and costly undertaking with a total price tag of $14 billion at the time, equivalent to nearly $40 billion today. The project required the creation of an entirely new island, protected by an 11-kilometer seawall and connected to the mainland by a bridge that alone cost $1 billion. Though this plan seemed radical, the success of Kansai paved the way for future airports built on the water. To offset the enormous construction costs, the government raised rental fees and landing charges. At one point, Kansai had the highest landing fees of any airport in the world. For instance, the airport charged around $7,500 for a Boeing 747 to land, compared to just $2,500 at New York's JFK airport. Some even joked that a cup of coffee there would have to cost over $100 just to cover the airport's expenses. Despite its engineering triumphs, the airport soon faced an unexpected problem. The island beneath it began sinking faster than anyone had predicted. Engineers initially estimated that the island would settle about 8 meters over 50 years. Instead, it sank more than 12 meters in just the first 8 years. To ensure such an artificial structure could support massive weight, like that of an airport terminal, the ground beneath must first be made dry and compact. Only then can it serve as a stable foundation for construction. The designers proposed creating an artificial island in the middle of the bay, measuring 4,000 meters long and 1,000 meters wide. Construction began in 1987. A massive seawall made of huge stone boulders and 48,000 concrete blocks was completed by 1989 outlining the future island's shape. To compact 21 million cubic meters of seabed soil and build an embankment rising 30 meters above sea level, the project required 10,000 workers, 10 million man-hours, and 80 ships. Construction crews first laid down a 1.5-meter layer of sand over the seabed, then installed 2.2 million vertical pipes, about 0.4 meters in diameter. 
These pipes were anchored into the clay and filled with sand, which absorbed moisture from the surrounding soil and layers beneath it. The seabed was then reinforced with an additional layer of earth. But by 1990, when the first island had already sunk eight meters instead of the expected five, engineers grew concerned. To save the airport from the encroaching sea, workers dug a pit beneath the passenger terminal, inserted steel plates under hydraulic jacks, and gradually lifted the supporting columns in stages. Even with these corrective measures, the airport continued to settle, though at a much slower rate. The main problem lies in the layers of clay beneath the artificial island. While engineers took steps to consolidate the upper layers, the deeper clay strata, interspersed with pockets of sand, proved far more unpredictable. This uneven settling has led to massive additional expenses, with hundreds of millions of dollars spent just to maintain the island's elevation above sea level. Construction engineers excavated soil from Osaka Bay, quarried it from nearby mountains, and even imported it from China and Korea to build up the layers. The sheer weight of the soil pushes moisture into the less dense sand and into horizontal drainage pipes known as wicks. The layers beneath the new soil are dense and non-porous, meaning that moisture can only move horizontally through capillary action via these wicks. The water then rises to the surface where it can be drained or evaporate. As the moisture leaves the soil, the layers become more compact, stiffer, and less prone to deformation. To protect the construction area, a massive seawall was built around Kansai. Made of 48,000 concrete blocks and crushed stone, the wall is anchored by steel chambers weighing hundreds of tons. As dredging and filling operations continued, the newly added soil layers eventually reached a height of 20 meters above sea level. During several stages of the land reclamation process, work was paused to allow each new layer to solidify and settle. Once the layer is stabilized at a height projected to remain 4 meters above sea level for the next 50 years, engineers drove 900 support columns into the ground, each resting on hydraulic jacks. The airport's foundations are built atop these adjustable columns, which can be raised or lowered using the jacks to compensate for changes in the rate of subsidence. When Kansai Airport was being built, the amount of soil needed for land reclamation was calculated based on the required ground level and the expected settlement over the 50 years following construction. Engineers simply couldn't believe there would be such a difference between the laboratory estimates of the consolidation rate, the process by which new soil layers solidify into a stable foundation, and the actual rate observed once thousands of tons of fill had been dumped into the bay. Overall, the weight of hangars and parking areas has little effect on the settlement compared to the billions of newton meters of force generated by the 70 square miles of landfill that form the islands. An Airbus A380, fully loaded with fuel and passengers, weighs less than 0.003% of the reclaimed soil's total mass. The problem of sinking is especially severe in the central part of the island, where the airport's critical facilities are located. Five out of the 17 monitoring points, including the main terminal and part of the runway, have already reached or even exceeded the predicted 50-year settlement levels. Despite the flooding issue, Kansai's design remains a testament to modern engineering. The terminal building, designed by renowned architect Renzo Piano, was created to withstand natural disasters, including earthquakes. In 1995, when the Kobe earthquake devastated nearby areas, Kansai remained untouched and fully operational. Later, in 1998, a typhoon swept over the airport with wind speeds reaching 200 kilometers per hour. The building withstood the storm thanks to its structure, which resembles an airplane wing. As mentioned earlier, the airport's design allows for continuous adjustments since the terminal rests on 900 hydraulic jacks that can be raised or lowered to compensate for uneven settlement. Even the runway, made of flexible asphalt instead of concrete, can absorb shifts without cracking. In 2003, believing that the sinking of the first island had nearly stopped, 
airport operators began constructing a second 4,000-meter runway. To accomplish this, they built a second artificial island next to the first one, making it several meters higher. At first, aircraft taxiing onto the second runway had to climb a slight incline, but later, as the second island settled, both islands leveled out. Engineers feared that expanding the first island and building the second runway on it could destabilize the structure, so they decided instead to create a new island beside the original one and connect them with a narrow causeway. The second runway was officially opened on August 2, 2007, at a cost of $15 billion. In recent years, the airport has faced new challenges. In 2018, Typhoon Jebi struck Osaka Bay, breaching the seawall and flooding the runway, which led to a two-week shutdown. This incident prompted further improvements, including raising the seawall by an additional 2.7 meters to protect against future floods. Nevertheless, engineers continue their efforts to slow down the ongoing subsidence. In recent years, several innovative solutions have been proposed, including the use of new technologies in soil research and stabilization. One such method involves injecting special compounds deep into the soil layers to slow consolidation and make the soil less prone to compression. In addition, scientists are considering the creation of extra breakwaters and protective structures that would not only prevent further erosion of the artificial island, but also shield the airport from potential storms and rising sea levels. However, these solutions require significant investment, and given the airport's current financial strain, the implementation of such projects remains uncertain. One of the most widely discussed solutions is the possible expansion of the airport through the creation of new artificial islands, which could serve not only as additional runways, but also as platforms for new infrastructure. This approach could reduce the strain on the existing islands and provide greater flexibility for weight redistribution. Despite all the challenges, Kansai continues to operate as a vital transportation hub for Japan and the entire region. It is also set to play a key role in the upcoming Osaka Expo 2025, serving as the gateway for an expected 28 million visitors. That's all for today, friends. Leave a like if you found the video interesting, share your thoughts in the comments, and see you soon.